Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. It's a joy to be with you. I'm a blessed guy, and I'll tell you why. Not only is God so good to me, and he's given his son for me, but I came this morning, and someone welcomed me in the, in the sacristy and said, Merry Christmas, Pastor. Thanks. I'm thinking to myself, I'm a lucky guy. There's probably a lot of pastors that show up and like it's, so. Well, we look like we're a fairly small bunch, but you know, because of COVID, we can't all snuggle together and have a sing-along. We do have some wonderful hymns that are part of our worship today. And I want to explain why that is. It's not just because pastor's exhausted. He doesn't want to preach so long today. But you know, it says in Colossians chapter three, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly with all wisdom as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts. And that's what we get to do today. We get to let the word of Christ dwell in us richly so that these snippets of God's word and the truths of God come out at us from the hymns too. It's just a wonderful experience. But if you're somebody who likes to sit on your hands during the singing of hymns, you're gonna be like bored today. <laughs> But let me tell you, uh, share an experience. This will shorten the sermon if I do this now. <laughs> let me share something out of experience because in my experience growing up, I had two favorite sports. Uh, that was baseball and then it kind of evolved into soccer. And uh, the baseball, you know, you, you, my father used to call watching baseball like watching paint dry. And I kind of get that, uh, but I still love baseball. And yet there's, there's a lot of action momentarily and then a lot of inaction. And, and then when I got to playing soccer, I found, well, that's not that way. You've got to really exert yourself and sometimes to the very last whistle. And, and, and it was important. And I remember a coach drilling into us, don't leave any, don't take anything off the field. What do you mean by that? I mean you leave it all on the field. I mean, you work your best, your hardest, as best you can at it, give it your all, and when you leave, no regrets. Well, worship is kind of like that too. Whether there's two or 20, two or 200, you know, what we do together as worship, as we honor our Lord, as we sing songs, hymns, and spiritual songs, it's like what I've learned is I want to leave it all in the church. I want to leave it all at the service, at the at the occasion because this is where we invest ourselves in God by his Holy Spirit works in us. So with that, and if you've got this, we're ready to worship. The opening hymn number 389, let all together praise our God. Praise our God before His glory. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Dear friends, God has spoken most clearly in his word about the condition of our human race. He has said, There is not a righteous man upon the earth who does what is right and never sins. He has clearly told us of sin's origin, reminding us, Sin entered the world through one man, and death through sin. And in this way, death spread to all men, because all sin. And the Lord's prophet, speaking for us all, said, Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Sin's penalty is very clear, for God has said, The wages of sin is death, and the soul that sins is the one who will die. God says to each and every one of our race, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. However, God also has good news for us today. Thanks be to God for the gift of his Son. We join in the verse, Rejoice, Rejoice, this happy morn, number 391. The Gospel according to St. John, the opening verses. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light, that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. This is the word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. We join in hymn 379. O come, all ye faithful. join in the selected verses from Psalm 98, the psalm for this day. The Lord has made his salvation known and revealed his righteousness to the nations. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. He has remembered his love and his faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Shout for joy to the Lord, O the earth. Burst into jubilant song with music, with trumpets and the blast of the ram's horn. Shout for joy before the Lord, the King. The Lord has made his salvation known and revealed his righteousness to the nations. You may be seated. An Old Testament reading from the 52nd chapter of Isaiah. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, who publishes peace, who brings good news of happiness, who publishes salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. The voice of your watchmen, they lift up their voice. Together they sing for joy, for eye to eye they see the return of the Lord to Zion. Break forth together into singing, you waste places of Jerusalem. For the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. 
The Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We turn to the hymn, Go Tell It on the Mountain, 388. Another reading from Isaiah the prophet, this time from chapter 62. Go through, go through the gates, prepare the way for the people. Build up, build up the highway, clear it of stones, lift up a signal over the peoples. Behold, the Lord has proclaimed to the end of the earth, say to the daughter of Zion, behold, your salvation comes. Behold, his reward is with him and his recompense before him. And they shall be called the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord. And you shall be called, sought out, a city not forsaken. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We sing hymn 381, let our gladness have no end. I should introduce just a word about this. Um, this kind of has a weird rhyme pattern and a weird pattern to the music. But if you look in the lower portion of the page, lower right corner, you'll see some funny letters put together. This is out of the Bohemian language. There was a cluster of Bohemian Lutherans back from right at the time of the Reformation, and, and they persist to this day, actually. And there was a church in my hometown that had descendants of these folks, and they actually had worship in the Czech language yet in uh, you know, my childhood. So uh, this, is, this is just one of their treasures for us to sing. We join now. Let our gladness have 
a reading from the letter of, to the Hebrews, the opening six verses. Long ago, at many times, and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom also he created the world. He is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of his nature, and he upholds the universe by the word of his power. After making purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, You are my son, today I have begotten you, or again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And again, when he brings the firstborn into the world, he says, Let all God's angels worship him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We join in hymn 362, O Sing of Christ. reading from St. Paul's letter to Titus. Paul had put Titus in charge of the island of Crete where they had done mission work. Paul had left and left Titus in charge and he wrote him these words giving him guidance as to how to set up leadership in the churches throughout the Isle of Crete. And I had a pastor once challenge me and tell me that if all you had was this letter of St. Paul to Titus you'd have all you would need to live a faithful, solid Christian life in just about 46 verses. We read from chapter 3, 
these words. But when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, he saved us, not because of works done and by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that, being justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is a trustworthy saying. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We join in hymn 361, O little town of Bethlehem. stand in honor of the Holy Gospel, which comes to us from St. Luke, chapter 2. In those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria, and all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. And in the same region there were shepherds out in the field keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. 
you will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen as it had been told them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We turn to hymn 380, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. You may be seated. stand as we confess our God. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated for the sermon hymn 376, Once in Royal David City.
grace, mercy, and peace be multiplied to you from God, our loving Father, and Jesus, our real Savior. I really had the reading to the Hebrews in my mind as I formulated these thoughts because it was telling us how God spoke to our fathers through the prophets. He's writing to Jews. So they have the Old Testament, but now he's put his confirming word on everything he's spoken through his son, whom he's caused to be born into human flesh. And then the writer to the Hebrews goes on to point out that Angels, as mighty and glorious as they are, they don't have this kind of name. They don't have this kind of glory. No, let all of them worship this Son, the Savior of yours and mine. Once in royal David's city, it really did happen. I shared that last night, that the opening word to chapter 2 in the Greek, um, and it happened, uh, is, is usually never translated. We just get on to the business of the census and Caesar Augustus. But the point is that Luke is writing historically here. He's writing historically and he's using historical terms as he writes. And so translators just go on beyond that. It really did happen, meaning this isn't the stuff of myth. It's not the stuff of saga, fable, fairy tale. It's an accounting of things that happened among us. And in fact, in chapter 1, Luke tells us, many have undertaken to compile an account of the things that were accomplished among us, just as those who from the beginning were eyewitnesses and servants of the word. So it seemed good to me also, most excellent Theophilus, to write an orderly account for you so that you might know the certainty of the things you've been taught. Chapter 2, so that you might know the certainty that it really did happen. But why? What does this mean, we Lutherans are fond of asking? Well, many years ago, did some calculating like he was born 1,300 years before me, a guy by the name of John of Damascus. You don't have to ask where he served. Uh, He commented upon how the first Adam's fall into sin caused mankind to be stripped of grace It put off his confidence with God. Remember, suddenly, as the Lord God walks in the garden, he's hiding, cowering in fear. Things are different now because he's transgressed his maker's will and literally said, I'll do my own thing. Thanks, give me of the fruit. Not only was he stripped of grace and put off of confidence with God, but he covered himself with a harsh and toilsome life too. He was now clothed with mortality. Dust he was, and to dust he would return. Indeed, he didn't die immediately from eating the fruit. But death had already begun its work in Adam and in Eve. And he was clothed with mortality. He would now die, and that was signified by the crumbling fig leaves replaced with still not very lasting garments of skin. And John of Damascus wrote these words, For it was sin that brought death like a wild and savage beast into the world to the ruin of human life. Think about that. As we spoke those words from Romans chapter 5, Through one man sin entered the world and death through sin. Uh, Think about maybe opening the cage door to a wild and ferocious beast that you cannot possibly put back in that cage and you've let him loose now for you and your fellow man. That's the idea of what John of Damascus is preaching about 13, 1400 years ago. Just like we need to preach and proclaim too. If any of you have ever been to a boar's head festival, it's a fascinating celebration of Christmas like they would have done it in the Middle Ages in England. And you don't understand the symbolism unless someone really kind of guides you into it, but they celebrate that on Christmas they're bringing in a boar's head, and of course they've roasted the rest of the boar, but what's so big a deal about that? It's because that you, peasant, go out to gather firewood in the forest, and the most feared beast of the forest is the boar. 
Not just because he's a great big hog. He's got tusks. Oh, and those tusks, they're not hermetically sealed. Those things have been digging around. They're covered with all kinds of bacteria and viruses so that if you get gored, you can expect that you'll get infected and you will die. The boar was the most fearsome beast of the forest. And so when it was caught and killed and brought in, there was triumph and victory. That's what Jesus Christ has done for you and me. That's how your forefathers, if you have any English ancestry, celebrated Christmas, rejoicing that Jesus Christ has defeated the boar. This wild and savage beast set off into the ruin of human life. You can think of all manner of ways in which human life has been marred by sin and death has invaded your experience. And if you can't think of a lot of ways, hey, give me a call. We'll sit down together and let's start exploring because maybe we just haven't looked far enough. Hymn 362 extols how Jesus Christ, the second Adam, whose coming we celebrate today by his unique and holy life, by his innocent suffering and death, by his victorious and glorious resurrection and ascension to glory, what Jesus Christ has accomplished is a once-in-a-universe event. Did any of you see the conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn this past week at the horizon a little bit after sunset? Yeah, those two planets, Jupiter. In Jesus' time, this was known as the king's planet. And Saturn, that was known as the guardian of Palestine. There was significant meaning of those two. Those two were on the horizon pretty close. I looked again last night just before church started, and they've already begun to separate again. They tell us that that's about a once every 800, I forget the exact number, about 800 years occurrence. But it'll happen again if things go on long enough, and it's already happened before a few times. Jesus Christ coming, living, dying, rising once in a universe for you and for me. What he's accomplished is complete. And so the writer to the Hebrews could say that the curse of death has been removed. He's accomplished the purification for all our sins. He, like a glorious high priest, but better than all of them, has gone to the Holy of Holies, to the Father himself, and shown that he's offered up his own blood for you and for me. So we, we're baptized into him. You're joined to Christ through baptism into death. That just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, you too get to live a new life. And if we've been united like this with him in his death, we shall certainly also be united with him in his resurrection. Good news, Christians. It's exactly what the hymn writer said in verse 2 of that hymn. What Adam lost, none could reclaim, and paradise was barred until the second Adam came to mend what sin had marred. For when the time was full and right, God sent his only Son. He came to us as life and light, and our redemption won. Oh, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, thanks be to God for the gift of his Son. Amen. Now may God's rich peace guard and preserve your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. As our offerings are brought forward, we sing hymn 363.
we prepare for prayer, I'd like to share one prayer request the, for the family of Pastor Larry Brott. He had been serving Emmanuel New Wells in St. John's, Pocahontas. Earlier in December, he had had heart surgery and on, was recuperating at home. And on Tuesday morning, some things set in and he died at home. Uh, funeral will be Monday at New Wells at noon. We want to include the family in our prayers. It's especially difficult time for them with hopes that were so high after the surgery. We also, I'm reminded that I'm surrounded by these gorgeous poinsettias, and why are they here? They're here because sin and death like a wild beast has invaded the human race, and so we're remembering loved ones, and they're in memory of them. So in a Christian sort of way, we acknowledge what has happened, but we also acknowledge what will happen as we confess, I believe, in the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting all because of Christ. We stand for prayer. Most merciful God, you gave your eternal word to become incarnate of the pure virgin. Grant your people grace to put away fleshly lusts that they may be ready for your visitation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Since you gave your Son for the life of the world, help us to be faithful witnesses of your mercy to us in Christ, that still others might be drawn to you. Bless the labors of all who seek to make Christ known in lands where few know him, that there might be a rich harvest for their labors. Thank you for the privilege of knowing that your grace has appeared, that your grace has come to us, and that your grace teaches us how to live so as to glorify and honor you. Because your Son, the Word, came to be flesh to set us at peace with you, help us so to live, and also to live at peace with one another for the sake of Christ. Gracious God, our globe struggles to cope with the reality of COVID. But death and decay are really all around us. Keep us mindful that Jesus has come and already conquered, and that as we trust in him, we too shall obtain the victory. Grant your mercy to those battling illness, infirmity, or weakness. Help them to make recovery. For those on hospice care, grant them peace and quality time with their loved ones. Grant peace and comfort to the grieving. Especially do we acknowledge the Broad family and Deanna and her children. Continue to watch over them, Lord, during this difficult time. And especially keep them mindful of Jesus who boldly proclaimed and truthfully too said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. And who then went on to say, because I live, you shall live also. Gracious Lord, we thank you that not only have you commanded and invited us to pray, but your son, Jesus, the word made flesh, gave us words to address you and taught us to pray with these words, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated as we sing away in a manger the alternate tune 365.
please stand as we pray the collect for this day. We pray. Grant, almighty God, that the birth of your only begotten Son in human flesh may set us free, who through sin are held in bondage. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and rules with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord wants you to receive his blessing, and so commanded, so receive it. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Our concluding hymn, Joy to the World, 387.